Hi, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today we're going to get a bit creative. I'm going to be trying to answer the question as to why it is that some people never seem to get COVID. It appears that you'll hear a few friends or family saying, you know what, I've been through the whole pandemic. I have never had COVID. Well, the reason is largely around their mucosal immunity. And it seems, just as it is with alcohol, different people have different immune thresholds. So what I'll be trying to see if I can capture today is one, I'm going to be showing you a video about why some people seem to have asymptomatic infection or subclinical infection or no COVID, it, it appears, one. So I'll show a short doodly on that. I'll be interested to hear your perspectives. I will also show you this interesting paper prevalence of um, persistent SARS-CoV-2 in a large community surveillance study. This is on back on the back of the fact that just a few days ago, super spreader characteristics could you be one. This, this paper here was published on the 21st yesterday. I spoke about this the day before. So when you, when you know that you are following and keeping up to date with the most up-to-date science, you follow here. But we'll come back to that in just a little. The reason this is so important is because I want people to support our Humming Heroes target. What we're doing is we've put together a Kickstarter program about Humming Heroes using innovative um, uh, storytelling to try and get the point across about nitric oxide. So it's entitled Inside the Nose, Almost Nobody Knows. And our campaign, the link is in the description, is right here. The power of no. And this is looking at nitric oxide, the role in keeping you healthy. And it has the link to my Substack post, main characteristics of a COVID super spreader, just in time. But this here, you will get the free ebook. You will get access to that post. And essentially, what we want you to do is to support our Kickstarter program. So once you sign up, you're going to get reminder emails because that's essentially what we are trying to do. Most importantly about it is that there is limited time. We've only got eight days left. We're over 50% of the support. We need some help to get us to that mark, that £3,000 mark that will cover all of the publication costs and so on associated with it. So please, for those who are interested, whichever way you take it, the ebook, The Power of No, is free. And you can get it uh, at the link once you sign up. But the purpose of it is so that you support Humming Heroes. Let's get back to the discussion about the COVID viral load. What is your immune threshold? I'm now going to play a video. It's only about one minute and 40 seconds long. I've created it. It's a doodly. And so I'm hoping that it's interesting enough to capture your attention. And uh, um, let me know what you think about it in just a minute. Let's go ahead with this.
I hope that made sense. And it was just the concept of trying to help people to understand why that mucosal immune system is so important. The air you breathe has all kinds of things in it, viruses, um, bacteria, and that mucosal immune system that lines the whole of your airway is what prevents the virus, in this case COVID, from getting through. If the virus gets through that mucosal immunity and gets into the systemic system, lymph nodes and so on, that's when you tend to get symptoms. So when someone has said that they haven't had COVID, they have been exposed to it, but the virus has been unable to break through that mucosal immune system. And I've got a, a clip from this to, to, to try and see if I can get that idea across. Um, so this is it here. Um, I, I've, I've just got this. This is the air here, breathing. Inside, below this is the bloodstream or the lymph nodes. And then you have, I've just created, there are more layers than this, but these four I've picked as the main ones. And the virus has to break through all of that before it can then cause an infection. And in different people, this is just better. And there are many reasons for that. But one of the things that I'm highlighting is the importance of, um, of nitric oxide in terms of protecting that immune system. So taking you now quickly to this paper, I've only started to read it, so I haven't gone through all the details, but I thought I'd share the links and uh, give you an idea as to what it is saying. Remember when I told you about the super spreader characteristics, the point I was making is that there are some people who are likely to be persistently infected. And the reason I said that, and you'll see it in the Substack link, is because they're likely to have ongoing infection in their sinuses. That's where Omicron is different from the other original variants up to Delta. Omicron and the Omicron variants tend to more efficiently infect the sinuses. And so therefore it's harder to clear. And so my point was a couple of days ago is that because of that characteristic of Omicron, it means that there are people who will be spreading virus all the time. And who could be one? So as I said, that video has already been done. You can take a look at it. But here is the confirmation as to exactly what it was I was saying. As I said, prevalence of persistent SARS-CoV-2 in a large community surveillance study. This was done in the UK. As you can see here, it was published on the 21st of February, 2024. That's just yesterday. And they were looking at the fact that um, there seem to be viral reservoirs in the community that's causing the virus to continue to circulate, especially in the highly vaccinated region. And one of the things I pointed out is that it seems that because the vaccine is targeted towards the spike protein, the mucosal immunity is therefore not as effective. And so even though people don't get as much severe infection, they are more likely to get an infection, a mucosal infection, and therefore spread it around. And this seems to be what this paper is pointing to. And what I've, I've highlighted here is the, the bit here, and this is so funny about uh, the way research works. They, they've identified 381 persistent infections with sequences spanning at least 26 days, looking at the different um, variants. And what they said in there, because you have to remember this study was started all the way back um, before vaccines rolled out, but it extended all the way beyond into 2022 and so on. But when they looked at the characteristics, my question was, in this group of persistent infections, what was the split vaccinated versus unvaccinated? Because that would corroborate my question that, in theory, the mucosal immune system is not as effective. Of course, fate would have it that they haven't mentioned it. So I don't mind if somebody takes a look at the paper and tells me whether or not they actually broke it down into the constituent bits, because that's an important question. As far as I remember, it wasn't too long ago in 2021 that they were blaming the unvaccinated for the pandemic and that they were spreading the virus all around. It's fascinating how things can change, isn't it? Especially when you do science. Anyway, so that aside, I'll just show you again another image from the paper here. And this is showing the different uh, viruses. This is alpha, delta, 
This is BA1, this is BA2. And in terms of the colors, green is reinfection, purple is persistent infection. And you can see here that is a significant, um, significantly higher number. So this is almost, wow, this is about six times higher or so. A persistent infection, uh, and they're looking at the time frame here in terms of days all the way out. So if you imagine some people uh, were up to almost 200 days, and uh, this is a reinfection here. This one was BA1, almost 200 days. So this, um, this individual, because it's only one here, could then be spreading to loads of people during that time. And my point is that if we don't identify who has these persistent and to some extent reinfections, we will not be able to control the population circulation of the virus. And this brings me back to why I said it's so important to understand nitric oxide. I'm not just talking about this just because it's random. It's because I realized by simply improving nitric oxide levels in the sinuses, it's antiviral. It has an impact on the immune system. It is an extremely powerful molecule that is underestimated, the power of no. So please take a look at this. Even if you're not interested in the, um, in the humming heroes, please take a look at the, um, the free ebook and educate those around you. My hope was that we would take this kind of simple, practical knowledge, educate as many people as we can, and therefore have an impact on the ability of the virus to circulate. If we don't do something like that very soon, the risks of continuous exposure for everybody, I mean, the risk is different between the um, vaccinated, unvaccinated cohorts, but there is still risk. And we have to try and figure out ways to address it. It's an important thing, and I, I really hope that we are able to move forward from it. So before I leave, I think I want to play my video again. I'll be happy to know if it makes any sense. Um, so take a look again at uh, this video. So thank you again for watching. I hope you found this valuable and look forward to sharing some more information. Please click on the link below. Join us in this journey. Let's bring science to the fore. Have a great evening.